Hello and welcome, and thank you all for joining us for today's webinar, Discover New Possibilities with the Power of Process Discovery and Process Mining. My name is Beth, and I am the editor for SSON and your host for this session. Today's webinar, I am delighted to say, is in partnership with Edgeburg, um, and some of the key areas that will be being covered today include exploring the latest industry trends, redefining process excellence, understanding how enterprises can and should leverage the power of process discovery and mining to ace continuous improvements, and how they can utilize process discovery and mining to be resilient in what has become the new normal. Before I hand you over to the presenters, just a couple of housekeeping points to raise. If at any stage you've got any questions for the presenters, then please don't be shy. You've got a whole interface on your screen at the moment where you will see a Q&A box. You can privately submit any questions that you'd like to send to the presenters in this area. And it's also best um, if you've got any technical issues for you to put those questions in there and myself and Ashley at SSON will be behind the scenes helping you out if you've got any issues. Um, so without further ado, it is my pleasure to introduce you all to today's webinar presenters. And um, the first of whom is Satish Sidhar Aramia, who is the Vice President and Global Product Head for Assist Edge at Edgeburg. Joining him today is Rasto Hlavak, who's the founder and CEO of Minute.io. And also joining him is Bernhard Schaffrich, who's the principal analyst serving CIO professionals for Forrester. So absolutely delighted that you could all join us here for today, um, for today's webinar. So Teach, I believe that we're handing over to you for the first, uh, first bit of this presentation. So the stage is yours and thank you all so much for joining. Thank you, Beth. Hi, everyone. Good morning. Good afternoon, good evening, depending on where you're dialing from. Hope you're all doing well. We're really, really excited to be speaking to you on this very important topic on process discovery and process mining. We are having this discussion um, with this backdrop of this unprecedented pandemic and the massive changes that it has brought forth in many ways, including the way we live, work, and operate. Uh, in fact, it is uh, to understand the impact of this on the businesses Edgeverve conducted a survey uh, three months ago with around 200 plus enterprise practitioners, the survey revealed that a whopping 63% of them were not able to meet their SLAs and deadlines during the initial weeks and uh, months of this pandemic. But what was also heartening to see is how enterprises have successfully leveraged the technology subsequently to navigate through these challenges. So as we look ahead, it's become clear that enterprises have to invest in building resilience, driving agility and uh, hyper productivity. Intelligent automation has taken a center stage in enabling enterprises to deal with the consequences of this uncertainty. Another research commissioned by Edgeverb indicated that enterprises that invested in intelligent automation fared much better during these times. 83% of enterprises believed that intelligent automation provided them with the required agility to respond in such situations. Adopting intelligent automation uh, is a journey and needs to be approached with the mindset of continuous improvement. And you will hear as we speak through this, uh, this, this webinar a lot about continuous improvement. Surveys of, uh, after surveys have indicated automation initiatives would have uh, yielded superior results if the right processes were picked, and if there was a detailed know-how know -how on how processes actually were executed on the ground. So this brings me to a very important and a critical success factor, a discipline that has far-reaching implications, and that is process excellence. Unfortunately, a success factor as critical as process excellence has not been able to leverage the power of technology thus far which has made practicing continuous improvement a real challenge. Think of it this way. What if enterprises had cutting edge technology that can help them unlock the hidden business value trapped in their processes on an ongoing basis? An approach that is scientific, an approach that is based on empirical data, and an approach that is free from human bias. A technology led approach that can serve as a foundation for process innovation, help create pipeline for intelligent automation, and most importantly, make continuous improvement a reality. On that note, I would it's my delight to invite uh, Dr. Bernard Sheffrick, 
principal analyst at Forrester to throw more light on the concept of process excellence and the importance of that in the days ahead. Over to you, Bernard. Thank you, Satish. Welcome, everybody. I'm also delighted to have the chance to talk about process excellence. And I'd like to start with the very good news first, and that is that the golden age of process excellence is on the horizon. And uh, this is a really bold statement, and I will provide supporting evidence that speaks to that um, and is also manifesting uh, that statement. So what's obvious, and we've all been seeing that, that uh, the pandemic made many business leaders realize that their processes were broken since everybody was working from home. And uh, processes that were just inefficient before the pandemic just broke down completely right in the pandemic. Um, right into Q1, what you can see um, on the right-hand side of that slide, Forrester um, conducted a survey among business leaders and IT decision makers, and we asked them about the process maturity. And uh, what they responded to, what you can see in, in this graphic, is that 6% of the respondents said that the majority of their processes is still completely paper-based whereas 24% of the respondents said that still many processes are completely paper-based, requiring manual routing of tasks, so completely non-automated. And um, more than 40% uh, percent responded that the minority, few processes are still completely paper-based. So in total, over 70% of the organizations that responded uh, to our survey right in the middle of the pandemic still have paper-based process dependencies. And of course, that's why processes broke. Um, or as one of the respondents told us, staff are at home, records are in the office, and patients are on hold. Now, we also asked the same decision makers, what are you going to do about this? And fortunately, more than half of them responded we have understood the message, we need to start transforming our processes, we need to start with process excellence, and as you can see um, in that chart, 27% even talk about automating large numbers of currently manual processes, and that's a good sign. We also asked um, this population, which tools are you going to use, or which tools do you believe are going to help you on your automation journey from where you are right now with your broken processes to where you want to be? We asked them specifically about um, discovery and analytics tools like task mining, process mining, process discovery. And what you can see here is that 27% said, we are planning to use these tools. We don't have them today, but we are planning to use them. 90% said that they are already in use with them. And out of the ones that uh, were already using them, a significant proportion responded that they would expand the usage of discovery and analytics tools to understand processes and tasks. We also asked them about modeling and documentation tools uh, for processes and tasks. And again, here you see the kind of same picture. So. Um, Users of process modeling and documentation tools are either intending to expand the usage, the ones that are uh, using them already will continue using them, and there are quite some, more than 20%, planning to use uh, modeling and documentation tools. So technology helps rescue broken manual processes. And this is why, to my earlier statement, I'm convinced that Process excellence helps to remediate broken processes. And now process excellence is a discipline. It's no longer limited to the theoretical kind of modeling exercise that we have been seeing for decades. Now you can drive tangible outcomes by combining process excellence as a discipline with automation technologies. And these days, this is exactly what business leaders and also IT leaders want to hear and want to see. And the technologies I'm talking about are the ones you can see in this chart, 
And I'd like to spend a couple minutes on these because that's important to understand. Not everything is RPA because everybody is talking about RPA. There is much more when it comes to automating tasks and processes. Um, one important area of technology is DPA, which stands for Digital Process Automation. Um, at Forrester, we distinguish DPA deep and DPA wide. So DPA Deep is what you might have called business process management tools in the 90s and maybe a couple of years ago. So basically tools that connect systems using APIs that uh, read and understand event logs and they pull them up along an end-to-end -end business process, manage them, monitor them, help you understand um, bottlenecks and gaps in such a process. Whereas uh, DPA wide, um, also known as workflow management tools, um, are emphasizing flows of data, flows of information, flows of approvals, um, connecting some low complexity systems, not going as deep as DPA deep. That's why they are called DPA deep tools, but still aspiring to um, connect systems across an end-to-end -end process. Um, then there is DCM, dynamic case management. Some also call it digital case management. It's, it's about um, document-centric collaboration. You will find these specifically um, in the finance industry um, with insurers. So think about claims processing, uh, mortgage origination. So it's important there to understand um, versioning of documents, editing of documents, editors of documents, you need to retain these documents. Usually these documents are connected with content management systems, but you need kind, some kind of automation in order to um, be more efficient with uh, processing um, such type of uh, documents. And then obviously there is RPA, which is mimicking um, human user interactions with computers and is basically automating routine tasks. In the 80s, another technology was coming up um, called rules engines. Now we are calling them decisioning platforms or digital decisioning platforms or intelligent decisioning platforms, but basically more or less complex rule sets um, that help take decisions in rather complex workflows. So you basically put thresholds in there, decision trees in there, and these decisioning platforms help other tools, but also human beings to take the right decisions uh, across the business process. Infusing or kind of an umbrella term, of course, is artificial intelligence, which helps all of the above technologies um, to be much better than without. But um, AI in itself is another technology um, which you could use to automate just by yeah, using it as a, as a standalone product. Now, interesting question is, how should enterprises plan their journey towards process excellence as these automation technologies are mature enough to leverage them in your companies and also allow you to continuously improve? So basically, the aspiration of process excellence, we have been reading, we have been hearing for decades. The easy answer is um, move quickly to automate, but be strategic at the same time. What does it mean? Two things. Um, in many customer inquiries I'm getting as an analyst um, from client companies, um, their BPM COE teams or BPM um, business unit related teams are quite living in an ivory tower. They don't really reach out to the real experts for business processes, but this is required. So if you want to realize automation at scale, it requires that all staff, all employees participating that have a say and that understand these business processes. So what I'm recommending to you is delegate most of the process automation work to those business experts who know the data, who know the processes, who know the activities behind the operations that have failed during COVID. And second, manage expectations, very important. So assume mm, a messy response and also promise to improve over time. So when you hit um, the doors or knock on the virtual doors of your IT decision maker or your business uh, decision maker, tell them 
we all help, but please be patient with our initial efforts. Now, the goal is to restore uh, broken processes, to restore operations. It's not about achieving elegance or perfection. That will come later. Commit to a learning process that's going to improve. Um, as you learn with your initial efforts and um, over a period of, say, one year, 12 months, um, you will start reaching elegance and perfection. What's also important is to avoid automation disasters. And we're seeing lots of companies now rushing for automation and implementing automation technologies without having thought about what to prioritize, which processes to start first with, and where to put the focus. So it's very, very important to prioritize the right automation candidates. And I provide these three questions, which, of course, you could um, complicate them, but basically it boils down to these three in order to make up your priority list for what to automate right now. Question number one, is the process standing in the way of critical business operations, yes or no? If yes, then this is your candidate. If no, drop it for now, park it somewhere. Question number two, can you automate this critical process using existing tools, so tools you already have at hand in your company, or tools that you could easily implement? If yes, even better, great candidate to automate. I don't recommend to start implementing tools necessary to first understand and digitize the process before thinking about automating the whole thing. So that's taking way too long, way too complex. So use what you have and start from there. And number three, are there additional areas of complexity that you need to address? For example, are there legal um, regulatory requirements that prevent you from automating? Because, for example, you need to keep all the documents created along a process on paper because it's required and you need to retain the paper. That's valid. Then start from question number one and pick another candidate. And to finish up on that one, so um, if you want to speed up this priority list and um, speed up your automation journey, you need to spend a, a couple more thoughts on how you do it. And, um, this slide here might help you. So, of course, you could manually document and analyze all your processes, but this is complex, and those of you who have already done that have found out it's error-prone, it's time-consuming. So what I'm really recommending is to leverage mining tools, task mining tools, process mining tools, because they provide an objective, really objective starting point based on system and user data. And then collaborate. Take the business experts who understand the processes, who work the processes, and analyze them collaboratively based on the mining results. And that's another charming fact of mining tools. They're able to visualize process model in a way everybody can understand. So you don't need to be a developer to understand what these tools create. It's really straightforward. Speed to insight. Um, and that comes back to, to uh, um, expectation management. Offer speed to insight and offer the ability to scale. Get back to your leadership and tell them, listen guys, I will be able to help you. Um, I need number one, I need number two, I need number three, but then I will promise to deliver from the first mining iteration to the priorities list of processes to automate, I will take no longer than four weeks. From priorities you have taken based on my list I will come up with a first automation iteration in another four weeks. So after eight weeks, we will have something to work on and to continuously improve. And from there, you could even automate the whole discovery process. So taking together task mining, process mining, and the whole discovery framework around you need um, is something prone for automation. It removes time consuming activities, and of course it supports the business immediately. And last but not least, coming back to process excellence, it's a continuous activity. So you start with discovery, process mining, task mining to provide an objective set of data. Then you analyze collaboratively with the business. You document your results, the analysis of what you have come up with in your analysis phase. Then you re-engineer saying, talking about the target process based on the documented as this process, and then you automate, and then you see what happens. 
And then you start from scratch. You repeat, you repeat, repeat. And this is very important to understand that the combination of process excellence and um, automation technologies make a difference uh, this time. And with that, I'd like to hand over to Rastro. Thanks. Uh, thanks, Bernard, for the great insights on how to drive automation at scale. Um, and especially the clarity that you provided on the multitude set of technologies that have to come together, not just RPA as an example for automation. The golden age of process excellence, as you called it, uh, is definitely on the horizon. So thank you so much, Bernard, for uh, sharing your views. With that, let me invite uh, Rasto, my friend from Minet and CEO of Minet. Um, over to you, Rasto. Thank you very much, Satish. So uh, I will start from the point, guys, where you, I will follow up on your presentations because I think there were a lot of really valuable information you mentioned there. So from a different uh, studies, uh, we can see that uh, uh, the results from the RPA projects are not really great. You know, we, we saw different numbers, like from 25 to 50% that the projects are failing. So it's really a significant problem, and we can see that. And uh, we also talk about, Bernard talked about the reasons why it is happening. Uh, so we believe that not every process is great for automation. This is important, like lessons learned from it. Uh, automation is not always the cure for every process in the company. And uh, we have a question, you know, then, so which processes to automate if we would like to go for the automation journey? Which process variants are the best for implement as a robot? So, and what is then the right approach before starting with automation? So what we believe, because there is a very a big hype on the market that automation first strategy is the right strategy to go for. We believe that automation first strategy is not always the right way to go. And there is something else uh, what is possible to do. So uh, we came with a concept, we call it Process Intelligence 2.0 first approach. So what does it mean? Why we are bringing this on the, on the market? So we believe that uh, actually with this type of technology, you're really this type of technology can really solve these problems. So first of all, really choose which process is the right process for automation, do a prioritization of that, and even understanding, because one of the problems what were before uh, were that uh, the companies were just automating the existing processes, not doing any optimization before that. And we believe that's not the right approach. And the technology, this process uh, uh, intelligence 2.0 concept can really help you to really understand which process variant is the best for automation to run it as a robot skeleton. So um, how this is work? So we combine two type of technologies. The first one is, uh, is actually uh, process mining. So uh, you start with your process mining. It can give you the scope and framework. So you get the data from information systems and you get a scope and framework uh, what end-to-end -end process, what to analyze. So it can automatically define all the activities in the process. And then when you need more deep analysis, there are some activities where you can jump on the task or task mining or um, process the, the discovery part and really drill down on the level of every click. So of course, there are some recorders running on the desktops. And combining these two approaches, uh, you are doing cor correlation of this data or this anal analysis, you know, and based on that, you have uh, outputs where you can see, yes, these processes are the right for the automation. This is the prioritization of my automation strategy. And this is exactly the right process variance based on different possibilities. I'm curious to go for uh, uh, the lowest cost, you know, or this is the most uh, fastest uh, part of the process, I would like to tell them. So there are different views. So this is exactly uh, the best way to go. So uh, we believe that uh, there are some other, you know, based, based on our experience and the best practices, we believe that could be some supportive technologies and functionalities that can bring uh, the biggest value for the customers. So um, 
Uh, from this perspective, you know, one of uh, these, what I can mention, uh, or maybe I will start with something else. So when what we believe, what is now going on on the market is that the process intelligence is not only technology right now for the process engineers or the, only the process people, process experts. It's becoming the technology also for the business people. Uh, the business users eager to understand their processes, and uh, we would like to empower them with a, um, you know, the data-driven decisions, you know, from the day one. And what we believe, what are the top trends to achieve that, are actually two streams. So first stream is definitely to go with a really a great DUI that these business people can really understand the, uh, the software from the beginning. The second one, the second stream, is the automation of this analysis. So, uh, and one of these, you know, uh, it could be the hierarchical process mining. So when you identify these uh, candidates and you would like to do it, you can go from the level of, uh, of high level of um, uh, uh, activities, you know, from process mining up to the low level drill down to the level of the clicks. So this is really amazing. It was not done before, and this is now possible for the business users. The next one, which is connected more for the, this automation of the analysis, is really, uh, we call it reward detector. What does it mean? So it like automatically identify reworks. So it's a repetition activities within the process. So uh, there are some very complicated loops in the process. And based on this analysis, you can immediately see what is really happening there. You know, where are the problems? You can see it from the financial view, from the performance view. The business people have all their KPIs, so they can really do quick decisions and do the cost cutting right, right out of this. Uh, the next one, what I would like to mention is definitely the process simulation. Uh, we believe that, uh, you know, uh, uh, process mining uh, and task mining, this process discovery can bring you some results, some where are the problems, where are the bottlenecks. But then the managers sometimes, they are not sure and not immediately, immediately implementing the changes because there are some different ways to go, how to do it. So, um, so they don't, you know, you don't need to guess anymore. You can test your process optimization hypothesis by simulations. Uh, if you're, if it's your priority, for example, uh, the lowest cost, you're running the simulation, different variants and see which process uh, a simulation, you know, the different optimization possibility can bring you the lowest cost. If the performance or some utilization is important, you can really focus on that. So it's really risk-free and it's really game-changing technology. Uh, the next one, we believe it's kind of the must for the companies. It's AI-powered root code analysis. So what does it mean? Based on this technology, you're able to really investigate where and where are the problems you know, in your process. So think about, you have some activity where it's connected with some, where you have a problems with all financial or performance problems, but it sometimes could be connected with uh, some suppliers, some type of the products in some countries. And uh, based on this automatic AI-based analysis, you can really have, okay, my biggest problem is here. So combination of these attributes, it's my root cause and faults and problems uh, in the process. So uh, we believe this is really, really important uh, for the companies to have this functionality. And last but not least is uh, definitely a really clear visualization for the business people. So uh, some user interface, uh, what they will use for the process monitoring, or if they would like to drill down, they can use the process part. They can see also all their KPIs. The most important, they can drag and drop, set up all these dashboards. So it's no programming. It's on the really on the user level, and and they can really get the all information immediately with a notification on their phone. Oh, we, we have a problem here, and they can jump in it and do decision immediately. Uh, what we see also some other scenarios, not talking only about RPA optimization, we believe that combination of this process intelligence 2.0 technology, combination of task mining and process mining and process discovery, uh, where it could be the benefit. So definitely, you know, uh, it's one of the scenarios is deeper and more complete process analysis. So you can really drill down, you know, to identify the bottlenecks on the task level. So we are going from the uh, level of the activities to the task level. 
uh, and even sometimes, you know, you can you can't find the data from uh, uh, information systems if you are working in some Excel or or so there is not locks, you know, uh, what you can find process mining. So task mining will be also a great addition to get more data and have much deeper analysis. So that's a scenario number one, which is not connected with the RP. It could be, but could be not. Uh, scenario number two is also great because you can add uh, business process documentation almost automatically. So it allows you automated business process mapping. If you are not sure what exactly is happening with your process, this is the right way to go. Um, the last slide I would like to share with you, it's connected with one case study, very interesting uh, case study, which uh, we have done. And uh, you see there were some great results, the ROI. Uh, and what I would like to mention here, because everybody is talking only about the automation. Yes, automation first. This is the only way how we can really cut the calls and have a ROI. This is an interesting one. Big telco operator, you know, this is a P2P process. And we can see, uh, if we see on the numbers, that there were more than 50% of the cost elimination and ROI is covered outside of the RPA space. So you see it was done by rework elimination with this, you know, rework detector stuff, uh, change of voidness, PO bundling, elimination of no action POs. So totally different, no RPA, no uh, automation is there. And even in the automation, there was a first project on the process mining space, you know, going in deep with the task mining there. Uh, and have some, you know, great results. Uh, but what we see here, what is the lessons learned, you know, so what will be my advice here? So um, so start, please, guys, go one step back from automation. Go back to the process intelligence and uh, start with a process mining first initiative, combining with a task mining or process discovery. And I'm sure that it can really help you with your process excellence journey. Thank you very much. Thanks, Rasto. That was really interesting. The concept of intelligence, process intelligence 2.0. Undoubtedly, this whole top down and bottoms up, you know, from process mining and process discovery coming together and the combination of the kind of visibility is, is so powerful. I think this whole journey of process excellence going forward is going to look very, very different. And I think this is exactly the kind of technology that uh, the process excellence practitioners, if you will, and people who believe in continuous improvement wanted and needed. And uh, and you spoke about one case study, and there are so much more, so many more, where value has been delivered le leveraging this transformational capability. And this is the future, no doubt about that. Um, in 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 a sense, what uh, what we're saying is that this investment that has to be made into uh, the, 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 the process discovery and mining has to be seen more like a strategic investment, right? It's a capability that an enterprise would need to transform all their processes, irrespective of what system that they're using. So it's a strategic investment that one has to do to champion the process excellence part, you know, not, and also drive obviously enterprise-wide automation that, uh, uh, that, that Bernhard spoke about, and very importantly, to drive the continuous improvement. Just one last thing before we get to the uh, panel discussion. You know, Edgeverb has been a pioneer um, and a trailblazer in this whole process discovery and task mining space. And we, we, we be tre tremendously proud about this. And we've been in the forefront in not only shaping the space, but also uh, now have a, a leading product like Assistage Discover uh, to help clients uncover the potential of process discovery. And we are delighted that Nelson Hall recently recognized Assistant Discover as a leader. And now we're even more excited to have this partnership with Minet mm -hmm. and, um, and the possibilities of this partnership and what these two technologies in combination can actually deliver to our customers to drive end-to-end -end, uh, process transformation. So with that, we'll switch gears. We'll get to the panel discussion. Um, uh, we spoke about quite a bit about continuous improvement, and Bernard, continuous improvement can be very elusive if it is not augmented with the right kind of innovation, right? And anything that is continuous obviously need, means that there is an innovation that is fueling this continuous improvement on a constant basis. So in that context, Bernard, uh, 
uh, can process discovery led approach be used to harness process innovation? Uh, any thoughts from you on on the process innovation uh, leveraging process discovery? Absolutely, absolutely. Um, so since, as I, as I said earlier, since mining and discovery provide objective, unbiased results about an as-is process, in my opinion, it is the perfect baseline for innovation, also known as your to-be or target process. So you base process ideation and process innovation on facts, and that's going to speed up the innovating process itself. And um, on top, I would even recommend process simulation as another valuable tool to experiment with your process innovation, which you designed and you put down on a piece of paper. So with simulation, you could easily test your innovative process concept before implementing it. Fantastic. Um, I think you're almost saying that let's create a, a digital twin of the existing process transform it before we actually go automate it. And uh, the other thing, you know, we've, we've seen is um, working with clients is that there's so much of innovation of process that has happened at the grassroots, right? Employees mm -hmm. have done a lot of innovation. And that innovation is unseen. You know, people have not seen it, but nobody knows it. Uh, <laughs> people have come up with very creative ways to close things, make work far more effective and efficient for themselves so, so this whole approach, yes, Bernard, I think we have seen um, it, uh, it's supporting the innovation journey as well, along with the transformation and continuous improvement. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so Rasto, quick um, question to you around, uh, uh, you know, to drive a transformation like this. Obviously, it is important to monitor and improve end-to-end -end processes, right? And, and, and to know at all points in time exactly what is happening. And, and not having that kind of visibility obviously will be uh, will, will create dark spots as uh, continuous improvement and process excellence journey happens. So what, what are your views? How can this technology be actually leveraged uh, to drive this end-to-end -end, uh, improvement, if you will? Thank you. Great question, uh, Satish. So uh, we see on the market that one of also the issues in the RP implementations is that uh, if you're in the monitoring part, uh, then uh, it's only done, uh, th there is a monitoring of the bots. So only the task level monitoring. Uh, but the customer, they would like to really improve end-to-end uh, -end process. So what we are offering here is that we are combining the logs from uh, RP implementations, running bots already, combining with the uh, end-to-end uh, process data, and really we can monitor end-to-end -to -end process. Because sometimes happen that some uh, problems are moved from the bots. bots. Bots are running well, but there is no ROI. Why? Because sometimes the bottleneck are shift to the human part. And based on this combination of technology, we can monitor end to end, with uh, find the problems, simulate even some scenarios, and then rework it. And then I believe that there will be a different results out of the RPA projects. So definitely yes. Wonderful. I think that is a need of the hour, if you will, uh, because no transformation, you know, it is not really at a task level, it is not even a process, it is really end-to-end -end user journey and customer journey. Um, so, uh, so so, great to see that this is possible leveraging these technologies. Now, uh, Bernard, one, obviously, you know, when we, if, if you look at a process, there is, there are humans who are executing this process and uh, there are people on the other side of the process who are getting uh, serviced in one way or the other, right? So, so there are actors on both sides of these processes. So, mm -hmm. my question to you is: Can the whole mining and discovery approach be leveraged to improve the experience of uh, the people who are engaged with these processes, which may be customers, which may be employees, mm -hmm. or any other stakeholder in the ecosystem? You know, what's your view about uh, leveraging this to improve the experience of the stakeholders who are engaged in this process? In my opinion, process innovation ultimately should, should always be driven by either customer experience or employee experience or both. Because those are the only factors ultimately that count. And uh, if you combine mining results with 
customer feedback with employee feedback about a certain process, you'll immediately see the gaps between their perceived experience and the ESS process. And this allows you then to optimize a process in such a way that it will make a positive difference for your customers or and your employees. So yes, there is this intense relationship and customer experience or and employee experience should always drive your efforts. Mm. Thanks, thanks, Bernard. Um, this obviously, you know, this this whole combined capability, if you will, of discovery mining is uh, relatively new. It is somewhat of a um, you know new capability in the horizon, as uh, as Bernard mentioned during his presentation. You know, um, it can play a critical role. But one of the questions, Rasto. Um, most of the people who want to try this out have is how long does it take to uh, uh, to leverage this technology to get some value to see results and uh, are there any real life case examples right uh, that we could talk about so can you give a fairly detailed view on how if somebody wants to adopt a technology of this kind can go about uh, structuring their program uh, and 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 going about engineering and driving this as an integral part of their uh, automation scaling automation across their enterprise. Right, right. Thank you. Very good question. So, uh, maybe it will be great probably share with you the one of the great uh, examples or case studies we have done. So it was done for one of the really top pharmaceutical companies, and um, where we use combination of these technologies. So uh, how actually the projects uh, was done. So first of all, we started with process mining and uh, based on the process mining analysis, we we're able to kind of this common framework what, uh, uh, what is important. And we also defined uh, the activities when we need more deeper view. Uh, and if we are talking about the timeline, uh, this was uh, this was pretty fast because uh, there was a systems you know it was very easy to connect with so uh, we were we can do we were able to do the first results in one week time from the process mining uh, perspective then we understand mm -hmm. where exactly to record run the recorders it was done maybe around I think two three weeks so uh, the the results very very good results for the presentation to the uh, business users for the management we were able to do it in one month, one month period. Sometimes it can vary. I think one month is realistic time. Some can, it could be even longer. It could be maybe six weeks. It really depends on how their good cooperation is, the company, how they are fast on their side. But these are the realistic uh, uh, timelines for implementing. Thank you, Rasta. And so it is, it, is a, it is not a complicated, if you will, right? Um, implementation, right? Relatively relatively fast um, and a perfected uh, way of ingesting data in, and are obviously, you know, leveraging uh, the sophisticated mining capability will be able to throw out results. Um, so with that, um, let me hand this back to Beth to see if there are any questions from the audience so, uh, so we can field them over to you, Beth. Great, thanks, Satish. Yeah, um, so we've now come to the Q&A part of the presentation. Thank you all so much for sending those in. Um, we'll go to the first question here, um, which says, does the tool provide process simulation, input and out data flows? Does someone want to take a take an answer to that? Rasto, you want to go? Yes, yeah, sure, definitely. Uh, yes, definitely the tool provides uh, the simulations uh and uh yeah that could be that could be definitely uh input in uh our data flows so uh we are what we are doing we are actually running the simulation we are able to create like a new data uh, out of it and a new visualization and process and then you can even compare it with the existing one so uh yes definitely it's possible Great, thanks, Rasto. Um, another question here: What foundations are needed to start process mining? So, i.e., data, platforms, process maturity, etc. Could someone shed some light on that? Sure, sure. So, uh, 
Uh, first of all, of course, it's uh, uh, process managing without data is not possible to do. So uh, uh, definitely, you know, we have a, a really big bunch of connectors to a very different system. So uh, it's actually not a not a big problem, you know. So we can definitely connect to the system, extract the data, and provide the analysis. Uh, so uh, process maturity, you know. Uh, I believe that in every step of the process uh, excellence, process mining is needed. Some companies are at the beginning of that journey, so they're just uh, trying to really map and understand this car, what they have and optimize. Some of them already know where they are, and they can vote for my more high level or more, I will say, uh, high tech features like simulations and uh, like uh, AI, you know, other AI stuff. So prediction stuff and so on. So it really depends, but in all levels of the process maturity, you know, it could be possible. Yeah, just to add, Sorry, um, okay. Beth, to Sorry, uh, okay. what Ross said, um, the, uh, the, the, when it comes to the process discovery part of it, you know, it's somewhat technology agnostic, right? It is agnostic to the, uh, to uh, the underlying enterprise applications. You know, it can cut across all uh, different, uh, technologies and systems, um, and with, whether it is web-based or thick client or thin clients, uh, even mainframes as an example, even Citrix-based systems. So it, it it will be able to, you know, a kind of very broad-based way in which it can um, observe the human interaction with the system and be able to capture all of that data, uh, which we call as the bits and bytes of the process, you know, that's something that we believe it is really the bits and bytes. So it can be done across all the systems. Um, so, so there is no such uh, a limitation, if you will, uh, from a process discovery standpoint. That's great. That's, that's a lot of detail in those answers. Thank you both. Um, Satish, we've actually got a question here directed um, to you. This person wants to know, could you tell what is the range of the effort, e.g. in man days, in order to implement Assist Edge uh, in a middle-sized company headcount of around 250 people? And of course, it depends on the size, but it, generally speaking. Yeah, if you look at Assist Edge Discover, um, well, it's um, you know, Rasto mentioned that, you know, you will be able to get end-to-end -end result in four to six weeks, right? And and uh, and and this is going to be well within that, right? Once you have the system installed, um, and uh, and the, uh, the the important thing is, you know, you, you will need a, a decent amount of data to be captured. So if you were to pick a transaction that is executed a reasonably enough number of times during the day or a week, then you'll be able to create, you know, maybe a few thousand transactions, if you will. Um, and, and once that is done, I think this is really a clicker button to get the um, insights and all the value that we're talking about. Now, that is for a task. Now, obviously, you know, you'll be executing this for different processes across many processes to create this kind of a blueprint, right? So, so that can be a sequential activity. So I think you can get started with this journey within a matter of a couple of weeks. And from there on, uh, very easily build on top of this. Great. Thank you, Satish. Uh, moving on to this next question here, which isn't directed to someone in particular, but I will, um, I'll will i let you fight over who gets to answer. Um, interested in how you capture or record the data for data mining. Would someone be able to, to shed some light on that? Justo, you want to go? Oh, yeah, sure, definitely. So... Uh... Capture recording the data for for uh, for for data mining, you know. So first of all, as as we uh, we're explaining, you know, so there is a process mining part. Uh, it the data is uh, exported from information system, the logs, for the record for the recording of the data for task mining or process discovery. There are special recorders which are running on the desktop of the computers, and they are recording every I will say every click. And based on that, uh, uh, with the correlation of the data and uh, special analysis uh, with some very special technologies, uh, we are able to get the results. Great so stuff. it's running. So it's a, combina it's a combination, yes, of these two inputs. Combination. Absolutely. Um, and another question here, how can those parts of the process which are manual or outside of core slash log systems best be integrated into this approach? I don't know whether you want to take that, Rasto. 
I can do it. <laughs> of course. So um, uh, as for the manual manual processes, of course, as the process is a paper based process, we don't have a data for that or part of it is data. It's it's uh, we don't have a data, but we still believe if you have a process which has maybe seven, eight steps and you have two, three, four uh, manual steps, of course, you will have some, I will say, gap of information in the in the process. But still, you have some other ones, so we'll not maybe have some as detailed analysis if you have everything covered digitally, but still, it's a lot of benefits. And even if the process maybe you, you can't get the logs from information systems, then you use task mining, and you can record and correlate this data. So uh, so we, we, you are covered. You are covering that step. So it gives you more deeper uh, insights exactly in that step. So this is yeah, how so we look on there. that. Yeah, just to add um, Beth to what Rasto said, see, this is where process discovery comes handy, right? You know, in fact, what we have also seen in many of our customers is there's quite a bit of activity that happens outside of the ERP systems, um, which may be in the office tools or so on and so forth. And uh, and 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 uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, the whole process discovery uh, discipline, if you will, it, it just kind of it cuts across all of these things, right? It is not necessarily ERP dependent or web-based application dependent. So it is somewhat, you know, being able to capture end-to-end -end journey. So that's why this combination makes it so interesting and so much more powerful. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, and this question here says, does the system have a toolkit of leading processes across core ERP processes, regardless of the ERP backend technology? So I think you're best equipped to take that one. Okay, okay, happy. <laughs> so uh, first of all, uh, we uh, we uh, what we can do here, uh, we definitely have a toolkit how we can connect with the data of uh, different ERP system. You know, uh, uh, for the. Um, you know, it's for P2P, O2C, really, really a different financial processes, really different processes for different industries. So it's covered. We have all the knowledge how to do it. Uh, it's not only based on the information system and the data, but also knowledge on the process level. So we know what are the best practices for different industries, different type of processes. What we can do always, it's compare your, uh, the blueprint of these processes to the process what a customer have and see what are the differences. And based on that also, try to help and run the imp uh, process improvement. Right, thank you, Rasto. Um, this question actually is directed towards you as well. Um, do enterprises need to run recording for every step of the process? And if so, what are the best practices for that? Can you answer that for us, Rasto? Definitely. So uh, it's not necessary, you know, think about, you will have a running recording for every activity or every part of the process uh, it will be too complicated and it's not necessary actually so that's why you start with your uh, journey process intelligence journey with process mining itself uh, you mapping end-to-end uh, -end process based on this analysis you will define activity so will you will see all the information of a high level process and then you understand okay for this particular activity i need much more information i need to go on the task level so, and you just run the recordings for this particular activity, or it could be more activities. Yeah, so definitely not, it's not necessary for all, only when the process manic show it that it's really necessary. Great, thank you. Um, we have one more question here. I'm conscious because we do have a, um, a poll that we'd love to run with all of you. So we'll get to the last question here. Um, final question, does the product allow discovery within a BPO environment and make recommendations on moving work from BPO, i.e. external, back to internal? Absolutely. Um, in fact, that's a, it's a great use case that uh, you know, we are leveraging this across many clients. Um, it, you know, one of the things that Rasto mentioned earlier is this tool, you know, this capability not only records the as is process, but also, you know, creates a very um, um, a scientific way in which, uh, you know, the process documentation gets created, right, automatically. And the documentation that gets created is so detailed enough uh, that, you know, one can, you, you can actually leverage this as a training tool, as a transition tool, to be able to move the process know-how from, you know, let's say one department to another department or one company to another company. 
Absolutely, I think that's a it's a brilliant question, and uh, this is a tool that can be that can help in that journey. Great, thank you. Yes, yes. And I can actually see that we've got. Um, oh, sorry, Rasto, did you have something to add? Oh uh, yes, I th I think uh, you know it's definitely that we have a lot of experience with the uh, different share service centers. You know, they're run externally, and uh, using this technology, uh, always the company can uh, figure out uh, and based on the simulation and you know recommendations, you understand where to go, and and sometimes you can even compare if for the company it's better to stay uh, use it externally, you know, to do simulation of resources. Uh, cause and so on, and compare it with the internal one. So, and do a decision. So, definitely yes. Wonderful. Do you know what? I think we've got time for one more question. We've actually just had quite a few flood in. So, why don't we address just one more? Um, we have a question here to finish on. How do we determine a consensus or most preferred process from various alternate uh, repeat path registered? Okay. But I think I. I was wondering if Bernard could. Bernard, do you want to address that? One, Rasto, I think. But maybe uh, I can, I can do it. Of course, <laughs> you know, based on the tools we have, uh, we can definitely uh, understand because every company has a different priority. For them, uh, uh, the best process could be that is the most efficient in terms of the costs. For another company, it could be that it's the fastest. The fastest part is really fast. The performance is important. For another one, it could be some other important um, uh, factors. And based on that uh, analysis, uh, of course, the analysts always need to focus on this prioritization for the company. What is the most important one? And based on this, you have really the results. So you see it from that particular view. Uh, if you would like to see the best process variance from the cost perspective, you see that. If you see it from the performance, you see that. So this is exactly how this technology can help you just having this almost out of the box. Wonderful. Thank you so much for all of your answers. They were really detailed and really insightful. So thank you all. And thank you all for your questions as well. Um, Satish, I'll actually hand back to you momentarily because I believe that you're here to navigate uh, to our last minute poll question and just sign off lastly. So um, I think we're moving on to the slide now. Okay, so we've got one final question. Um, so what would you like to do now to speak to a process excellence expert, see a demo to kickstart your process excellence journey, or to get more information about process discovery and mining? Feel free to send in your answers um, right about now. Um, in the meantime, though, I would love to thank you all so much for joining for the presentation today. Um, I want to warmly thank our speakers who have joined us, uh, Rasto, Bernhard and Satish. It was honestly a pleasure to have you and obviously to partner with Edgeverb is fantastic. So thank you all so much for being part of the webinar today. Um, if any of you have sent in any questions that we didn't manage to address um, on the webinar today just because we've run out of time, then we'll of course send those across to the presenters for them to reach out to you separately um, once the webinar is finished. And we'll also be sending out an email um, for a recording of this session if you've got any colleagues um, or anyone on your team who didn't manage to, wait to make it to the live webinar um, but also wanted to, to see some live recordings. So we'll be sending that email shortly. Um, but yeah, final notes, just to, to say thank you to our wonderful speakers. So Rasto, Bernhard and Satish, it's been absolutely wonderful having you here today. Um, and thank you all to everybody, wherever you are, for joining. And we hope to see you at another live webinar soon. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, guys.